while searching for notes to fit a chord progression, creative musicians quickly discover that the chord tones will always sound good. But how does one determine what other pitches are available? Well, hello, I'm Bradley Sowash, jazz pianist and educator, and today we will explore how to find the in-between notes to add more choices and colors to your improvising. Let's start with a little bit of music to get things rolling, and then we're talking about what's going on in that. Two, three. talking about how to find the notes that are in between the chord tones when we are improvising. Now everybody knows that, not everybody knows, but at some point creative musicians, which I define as composers and improvisers, basically every musician is creative to an extent, but I'm defining it as musicians who choose their own notes and rhythms. A little bit different from what I would describe as interpretive musicians. And when we're choosing our own notes, and we have a given chord progression, it's easy to sound good if you know the notes in the chords. This is why we practice arpeggios on, on any given instrument, and, and that will identify the chord tone. So if we have a C chord, C, E, and G sound pretty good against that chord because they're in the chord, right? And the question then is, what are the in-between notes? What are the notes that are not chord tones? And that's what we're looking at today as kind of a follow-up to last month's tip of the month in which we looked at how to identify rhythms to borrow and, and use in our improvising. This one is drilling down a little bit on notes in between the chord tones. Of course, there are many notes you can improvise with. We talk a lot about the pentatonic scale in my online jazz piano classes. And if it's a bluesy or dark minor piece that has the right character, you can use you know, fallback scales like the dark blues or the bright blue scales things like that. Lots of, there's lots of choices, but we're just looking specifically at the notes in between the notes this time. To do that, I'm using the progression for all of me. I just watched last night a wonderful documentary on Netflix about one of my great heroes, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, what a brilliant musician, independent of her singing skills. Just her improvisations are on par with the greatest improvisers of all time, in my view. Um, and, and she helped make this uh, piece of jazz standard, the uh, all of me. Um, I'm not going to play the tune today, but just work on the improvising. And here's just the first half of it here. It uh, starts on a C major seven. Now, some people use a C six or just a C chord there. There can be choices. I'm going to use C major seven for the purposes of what I'm explaining today. So C major seven to E seven, A seven, D minor seven, and then kind of circles a, a back again, E seven, A minor seven, this time a D seven, not D minor and then becomes minor, D minor 7 to G7. So that's just the, the first half of this wonderful tune. And we use that as a basis to explain what we're doing. Just to highlight that a starting point for many improvisers is to just lay into those chord tones. We want to be able to figure out what those chord tones are. So just taking these first four chords, we want to figure out what those notes are. And um, since this is a short session, we we'll keep the participation somewhat low, although I may ask for questions at some point. 
We're just going to do this for a quick half hour. And to find those notes in between, we want to just know our, our chords tones first. Um, and so just maybe write down for yourself right now the notes that are in a C major seven chord, an E seven, an A seven, and a D minor seven. We're just take that much. Um, and, and as you scribble those down uh, and write those chords down so you can think or play them, um, I will show you a way that I like to work on that, which is I use, I make these uh, chord stackers where little individual tiles, kind of like Scrabble, can be written down here or laid in place as a manipulative to, uh, to identify chord tones. It can also be used to show scales. So here are then the first chords. C major seven is C, E, G, B. Those are the notes in the chord. E seven, E, G sharp, B, D, A seven, A, C sharp, E, G, and D minor seven, D, F, A, C. Of course, we move these all around to make new chords. And let's just hear how those sound in their raw state. There's a C major seven, C, E, G, B, E seven. Um, and I'm gonna play the A seven at root position for a minute, even though it's kind of jumpy and then D minor seven. So you want to know what those notes are. And then I guess if we're going to be a pianist, although this session is open to all uh, types of musicians, we want to find a way to play those without too much jumping around. So I might play that A7 in a second inversion because it's really close to the E7 there. And then D minor seven is in root position. So that works out. Now, if I'm going to improvise on that and I'm going to stick just the chord tones, we know that we're being safe territory. What's a wonderful violin student, um, I didn't teach her violin, I want to be clear, I was teaching improvisation to, to string players, um, though I play a little fiddle. Um, she called these safe notes, I like that. So if we just give that a, a little bit of a, a chord tone based improvisation, I can play just on the C major seven chord, all uh, nice music using cool rhythms. So let's get a little beat in my feet going here, you know. If I take that same approach of playing cool rhythms only on chord tones with all four of those chords, I get something like this. Here's E7, 100% chord tones. So we're just using 100% of chord tones and, and we can get some music that fits. And so that may be a way that you deal with an emergency improvisation when the band leader says, hey, take a lick or take a solo or it's your turn. Ah, I know the chords of a pianist maybe and, and I'll just wiggle those chords um, and in cool rhythmic ways. That, that's a great fallback. But in this session, we want to go a little bit beyond that and find the in-between notes. Before I do that, I'll just mention that if you are having some trouble with jazz pop chord identification and not sure what a, a delta means or what what is the difference between a, a dominant seven and a major seven um i would just recommend a, a resource i have called understanding chord symbols i think it's my top selling um, how to book um that's for adult musicians who've had some theory training um, if you're brand new to improvisation, I have a handout called Scaling the Chords, which is a wonderful starter to doing this kind of work. And then for beginners, I have a, a resource called Pachelbel's Canon with Activities, because of course, Pachelbel knew all about chord tones. You know, that, that famous canon is, is a, basically a Baroque a jam session, I would call it. Um, so, so we've so far we've hit improvising with chord tones 100%. Now we're moving to the meat of the matter, which is finding the in-between notes, um, the notes that are not the chord tones. And how can we determine what those are? There are, there are various strategies. But if we're going to take like that C major 7, uh, we can think about this piece is in the key of C, C major 7. So uh, it's in C, and that's the one chord in the key of C major 7. If we, if we were to write all the chords in C major 7, this would be the first, the first four note chord. Jazz musicians use four note chords. Uh, and the reason, by the way, a little secret, one of the reasons that jazz musicians love rich chords instead of your more Mozartian triad environment of just three note chords 
is that there are only seven notes in a given scale. And if you have a four note chord, that means that there are only three in between notes to navigate. So we have more than half of the notes in an improvisation on a given chord are already available to us in the chord tones. We only have to think about what might we play for the other three. And so if we are in a given key, such as C major, the obvious answer is to play the notes in the key. So the notes in the key of C major is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? So the in-between notes in that case would be D between C and E, F between E and G, and A between um, G and B. Now you may think that, well, that's, that's you know, that's pretty obvious, uh, and, and I hope it is, because that would, that would give you uh, exactly what you need to, uh, to play that first chord. The problem is, or the challenge is, is that not, not very many jazz tunes stick to the key 100%. They're going to use some chords that are not in the key, and we have to think about them in a sort of a special way. Um, so let's just e emphasize for a second against that C major 7, playing first all chord tones and then bringing in those passing notes, D, F, and A. So one, two, three, and chord tones. So now I'm using all seven notes of the C major scale and the in-between notes are D, F, and A. So the first rule of thumb is if you have a note in the key, use the notes in the home scale. And I think that's not saying a whole lot of insight. Where it gets interesting is when we have chords that are what I call rogue chords, or what music uh, theory people call non-diatonic chords, which means outside the key. So if we think about the notes in, in uh, this chord progression, we notice that E7, since it has an E G sharp B D, they, that has an, a, a note in it that is not in the key. And that suggests that not only that note could be different from the from the home in between notes that we would find in the key, but um, maybe those in between notes could be adjusted as well. Same as the A7. If we look at that chord, we have a C sharp in there. That is not a C major chord, so we have a clue there that we are playing something outside of the key. Um, some people teach these as borrowed chords. I like to think of them as almost mini uh, flying by other keys. So if we found an E7 in a key, uh, we might be able to determine that we are either in E, I'm sorry, A major or A minor. We're not really sure which one it is. Um, and so E, G sharp, B, D is the five chord in the key of A. Hmm. So maybe the notes in the key of A would, would fit that. In that case, if we were to figure out what notes are in between and E7, and here I've written down those notes, the, the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, we might say, well, we are in the key of A, perhaps. And so we're trying F sharp here. Maybe I'll do them down here so I have more room to, um, to change them out. So F sharp, and in between here we're playing A, in between here we're playing a C sharp. And now we have the in between notes on the second chord of the All of Me progression. We've identified some notes that are based on assuming that maybe this chord is suggesting the key of A major. And so let's see how that sounds if we improvise first on white keys against the C major 7, and then adding in E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, which you'll notice if we started on A and played the same notes would be an A scale, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. So just an A scale, but centering it around that E7 chord. So the C major 7 again with the whole scale, uh, maybe without a whole lot of interest just to keep it clear. Okay, now we get to that E7 chord. Let's play the notes I just described. That one works. That sounds pretty good. Okay, and then of course, we don't want to play them heavily in a linear order so that it sounds like a scale. We want to mix things up a little bit. Um, so we might just do um, those two chords or add a little bit more interest using those same notes. One, two, three, and... So that seemed to work pretty well. 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And what, that's one of the things I want to point out today is that the in-between notes are the most flexible notes. You can actually make choices about them on the fly, or you could sit down and, and write for yourself a couple of, of notes that are available just like I did. So um, we have that nice collection here, but let's make some changes to it because that might make some interesting, uh, interesting choices and give us some new color. Again, if we look at this chord progression, and this is like a typical jazz progression, you have that C major seven in the key of C, then an E seven, which is not in the key of C, but it kind of is in the key of C because the song is in the key of C. <laughs> we have this sort of memory at once the tune gets going of what the home key is, which has been a part of you know, Western music for 400 years. That's why the end of a piece sounds done when you play the, the tonic chord, usually the opening chord, even though we may take great excursions in the middle. The, the assumption that composers and improvisers have is that listeners remember the overall key. So with that in mind, we could just say, what if we took out this F sharp and made it an F? Why would we do that? It's nothing to do with the key of, of A major, but it is in the key of C. So we have a kind of a in-between note that might add a little color and it sort of is, it's still satisfying the alphabetical need for an F, you know, alphabetical meaning each letter of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, etc. But we have an F natural because that is, um, you know, in the key of C or we don't even actually over overthink it. But listen to how it changes. Um, here then was the, the first one with the F sharp. And here it is with an F natural. That's sort of neat. Maybe it's a little too dark first. Maybe it's a little too exotic. That's your call. Um, let's put it in context here. One, two, a one, two, three, M. So, so maybe we decided that, that we want to have an F there uh, because of the reasons we just discussed. Or maybe we decide we're actually play a C natural here, even though now um, these, why would these even work? Well, you could argue, well, it's sort of setting up an A minor chord and the next chord is actually a surprise by being an A7. Or you could say, well, these are in my home key or, or um, you could just play what you want. <laughs> so let me play this with these in between notes. Yes, even though they're pretty exotic and there's not a good name for those skip for the scale that results. Here they are. E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, D, E. So the point is, you know, we could identify that scale. If you want to get real technical, we can say it is the fifth mode of an A harmonic uh, minor scale. Or we could just say hey, we're looking for notes in between the notes. Um, and so let's see what that yields if we do a little improvisation on that, starting with the C. One, two, three, M. like that I kind of like that now we just start to play with things you know we could you could just for the point of experimenting maybe we do put the F sharp back in what does that yield seems acceptable what if we get a little crazy here sound like Bob Ross let's get a little crazy here and put a tree in the middle of our pond with an A sharp now what the heck is that gonna do Not liking that too much, so I'll add an F sharp as well. Let's see what I think of that. Wow, I have, I really almost have here a whole tone scale. Ha! Ah, let me see if that yields any interest here. One, two, three, M. It works! It's because we're, we're coming back, we're coming back around to, to uh, I'll just put a little color on my piano here, a little reverb. We're coming, we're coming back around to the chord tones. And so these are the in-between notes. And so one of the lessons I wanna leave you with today is that the in-between notes kind of don't matter. They're on the way. And so we can uh, just shrug it off and focus on chord tones and stick some in-betweens, or we can be really thoughtful about it as we were just now. Um, we could do the same thing on, an a, on the A chord, you know, what, what in between notes would we pick? You know, so let's just think, okay, B makes sense, just A, B, C. Now we need some kind of D. Probably it's the, it's the same. 
do we want this to be an F sharp or an F? Whoo, that's a lot of reverb, isn't it? We don't want that. Okay. Um, um, and do we have an F natural? That's, that sounds pretty good. So we, you can be deliberate about this and, and, and think through your chords and, and find your in-between notes and, and then, uh, uh, you know, bring those out. And you can change them on the fly because jazz music is a lot freer than you think. If we are connecting chord tones and landing on chord tones, the notes in between are, are in service of those end goals. And so do what feels instinctive at the time. And that's what most of us do. But take it through a little exercise to identify what else might be available that you're ignoring. So I'm going to show you an exercise for that. And um, this would be uh, a mixing a arpeggio with a scale. So here we would have root, third, fifth, seventh root right down home. So for the C major seven, so we play root three, five, seven, and then scale down. And the scale down helps us identify the in-between notes. So maybe we use a G sharp, I don't know. An F sharp, excuse me. You think I would never play that. But you know, for the last note of the tune, There's my F sharp. You know, it, that playing with the in-between notes identified a color I might not otherwise have picked up. Um, and so that is a good exercise for seventh chords. Again, uh, play the quarter notes going up, scale down. We can do that on the E chord. And we have to decide what those in-between notes are. I'll use sharps. Uh, and then you can play it backwards as well. There we go. So we start with a scale and then um, play the chord coming down. Now, a variation on that that I like even better is when we jump up to the ninth. So this will be more advanced. We're gonna play all the way up to the ninth. Root, third, fifth, seventh, ninth. And come home. E7. So this time I used F and C on that. Let's try it on the A. I used B flats on that. I kind of like that. So that is an exercise that I learned in the Jamie Abersold Summer Jazz Camp. I think these two exercises about playing a chord up either to the seventh or the ninth and then scaling back down and then playing that reverse, scaling up, chording down, will really help you chord by chord in a tune, identify the tune, the notes that are available to color your chords. Now, the third part of, of three sections, so far we've talked about improvising only with chord tones, and then we've gone through the meat of it here with finding the in-between tones um, or notes. Now, I just wanna talk about targeting those special notes. Um, and Kathy says, I like these ideas. Thank you. It helps organize the chaos of my improvising. I know what you mean. Yeah, sometimes improvising is just hoping for the best. And sometimes it's more thoughtful. Um, and it's really probably a combination of the two that makes the magic. So if we took a look at this chord progression, a couple of things I would do um, if I were first playing this for the first time, which is long, 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 long ago for me. <laughs> I would notice that we had that G sharp, just as we showed before here. Um, we have that G sharp on the E7 and we have a C sharp on the A7. So when you write them down, you really see, well, there's a sharp there. There's a tic-tac-toe or a hashtag. That must be an important note. So I might just write those in. G sharp. That would be a note that is not in the key. And I want to make sure I bring that out. So here I'd play a C sharp. And I might just say, don't forget to play those. But I might also write here, a note that I discovered in my playing, that uh, in my explorations, which I thought was pretty cool. So maybe um, on this chord, even though it, it seems a little bit illogical from a theory point of view, I might say, you know, let me bring out an F here. And 
and once I played that F, I might start to realize that I have a new chord here. E, G sharp, B, D, F. I have a ninth chord, and I, I could even think of that as a chord tone, the F. Then I have a E7 flat nine. Whoa, it's a jazz chord. But I just got there from more of a, a s s figuring out the in-between notes. On the, on the A7, let's see what we could do interesting in there. We could play the, the, the B flat there. That would actually work really well because it sets up a feeling of D. So, so I might do that same adjustment here, B flat. I might make a point to use that. Um, and let's just say for the, for the, just to make this fun, let's, um, let's go ahead and play, let's say we, we liked the C natural here as well. So we're basically staying in the key. So I put here, I made a note to myself that the G sharp is really important on that E7, but I want to play Fs and Cs as well. And when I get to the A7, I want to remember to play B flat because I, I like that sound that I discovered through that exercise. And so let's just give that a go for a minute. F and C. Bringing out the C sharp and B flat on the A chord. So I've identified those notes and I've made a bigger deal of them. And in the end here, I've actually integrated them into my chords. So not only did I target what I call special notes uh, and make a big deal of them, actually, let me make a bigger deal of them. On the A7, let's start on a B flat. Right. Here's the A7. I found I like that B flat. Ooh. So I came right on the downbeat on this very unusual note. And, and, and it, it made a big deal out of it. And then you have, you know, a, a sophomore jazz major running up and saying, well, what was that scale you played on the A7 chord? And you go, uh, it was the Locrian minor um, from the Indian Raga system or something. <laughs> and you sound like you're really smart, but actually you just, um, you, you found it because you like that color. So we've, we basically, that's it. Um, I, I, a couple of related resources I want to point out to you if you're new to this way of playing and you're teaching it. And I know a lot of the people who attend my Improv Tips of the Month are teachers. Uh, as an underused uh, resource called Lead Sheet Challenge, which is a, a competition from in 10 levels from grade 0 to grade 10, where there are um, lead sheets that, that are both public domain and originals that are graded and they're designed in a way that can be used as a comp competition. So you can either just have a, uh, you know, I don't really like competition, so you could call it, call it a festival. And there's a, a, a rubric and um, a, a judge's sheet and everything else to, to, to put some of these ideas together. I just wanted to point that out. And, of course, my signature uh, method books are the Creative Chords for Beginners. And that is um, reading and improvising from day one, and that's jazz, which is very specific to learning jazz. So I will just wrap this up by, by doing a little bit more, more playing, and what I'm going to do is make an effort to play uh, notes that are not uh, typical as in-between notes, and let's see if I can get some interest coming here, and maybe some of them I won't like. Maybe some of them are chromatic skedaddles. <laughs> And, and uh, worth, I'll, I'll try to give an extra sense in my playing to the in-between notes on this, even though they're passing notes. Let's see what happens. A one, two, three, four. Sharp on a C 
court. Right. <laughs> well, thank you for spending some time with me. I'm Bradley Sowash, jazz pianist and educator. And until next time, enjoy your creative music making journey. Now, sharp. <laughs>